And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Our faith and blind faith, one and the same thing? Do you have to be stupid to have faith? Do you need to give up your brain, your rationality, your smarts? In fact, is faith for people that are too lazy or too gullible to think clearly and to think for themselves. This is what many people are saying today, and they're saying it especially to our young people. And so many Catholic young people believe, believe, believe when they're in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. And then because they have never been taught why they believe, they hit some age, who knows what, ninth grade, college, and just throw it overboard. And they look back on their days of faith like they go back on their days when little children believe almost anything. And who is at fault for that? For not explaining to Catholics, including Catholic young people, why we believe. And that we have evidence, strong evidence. And that there's no conflict. There is no conflict between faith and reason. Although so many out there, so many quacks out there, say there is. Of course, I blame the priests, with a few others perhaps thrown in. And it's tragic that we have treated faith as something very squishy. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't. Sometimes people use fancier language. They say, oh, well, faith is a gift. Um, I don't have that gift. Oh, okay. How about the gift of charity? Do you intend to be a mean son of a gun until somehow you get hit on the head and suddenly you want to do good things for people? I hope not. It's not a gift like that either. You've got to work on it. Every gift that comes from God requires our cooperation. Every gift. And on this feast in which we celebrate, perhaps the most famous part of the Bible on faith, Doubting Thomas, it's good for us to wake up and say, how did we get so sloppy? You know, St. Thomas Aquinas, arguably one of the most intelligent people in the history of the world, he had five proofs for the existence of God. Does any Catholic young person know those five proofs? Have they been taught those five proofs? Oh, I'm not saying they can't have some arguments about them. But we completely ignore this. We ignore the fact that some of the greatest, smartest people in the history of the world were serious, believing Christians. Isaac Newton and all the rest. 
Somehow this world around us has convinced that you've got two choices. You've got stupid, blind faith or reason and intelligence. And over and over again, the world around us says the only kind of faith is blind faith. Jesus Christ said to St. Thomas, for a very interesting reason, blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. He did not say blessed are those who just have silly faith in nothing. He said it because the job description of an apostle, including the apostle Thomas, the job description written right in the Acts of the Apostles when they had to choose a newbie, to replace the bad guy, Judas, the job description for an apostle had to be that that person had seen the Lord and been with him all through his three years of ministry and had also seen him die and rise again. Thomas had to see. But what about the rest of us? For some of us, I think, the real issue is this. We don't even know exactly what the word faith means. Faith, in some ways, means you trust. You trust some source, some authority. Because you can't test everything for yourselves. You are all sitting under this roof. And how do you know this roof won't collapse upon you tonight? There's a church in Baltimore I'm from. St. Rose of Lima, down in South Baltimore. In the mid-1920s, the roof collapsed and sadly killed many people. Then I remember as a boy in the mid-60s, the totally new, totally different St. Rose of Lima, the roof collapsed a second time. I remember I was invited to say Mass there by a friend, a priest who was pastor there. It was the weirdest thing I ever saw. There were about 150 people at church at St. Rose of Lima. And we all know how Catholics like to sit in the back. <laughs> Not at St. Rose of Lima. They all sat around the sides. <laughs> close to the exits. They had reason to worry about their roof. Tonight some of us will go over bridges you have never checked to see who the engineer was. Tonight, some of you will have supper, and you will have food, and you have not contacted the FDA. You simply bought it off the shelf. You can't go through life without trusting somebody. You cannot test and prove and examine it all yourself. And we as Catholics, in the end, what we mean by faith is this. Can we trust those who have handed the Catholic faith down to us? And I think for some of us, we might get, want to open up those books and read. There are some remarkable, remarkable Christians, all the way from the beginning, who had people just like today said, your religion is full of baloney. They were saying that about the church at the beginning of the church. And those early Christians didn't go, oh, 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 we just have a stupid blind faith. We believe, we believe, we believe. No! They had arguments, strong arguments, and they went up against some very smart Greek and Roman philosophers. Why aren't we teaching our young people how to defend the Catholic faith? Are we afraid? Do we feel like if we look too closely, the whole thing is going to collapse like a house of cards? I say it's time for us. It's time for us to stop being so apologetic and to start being what the Church calls Apologetical. Apologetical means we learn how to explain and defend the faith. Because I'm convinced that there are many people, including many young people out there, who are just waiting for someone to give them reasons. Did you know that it takes as much blind faith to be an atheist as to be a religious person? It does. It's time our young people started to say that to their atheist teachers and professors and celebrities. Let's not believe in blind faith. That is a stalking horse. That is a phony baloney argument. 
and we as Catholics don't need to sucker into it. We have reasons for what we believe. We have reasons that have been tested and proven over the centuries. We have fought, men and women have fought and died for this beautiful Catholic faith. How tragic if all we can say to our young people is, I guess you gotta choose what you believe. I guess it's all the same. I guess there's really no difference. Stop that. Stand up for the Catholic faith, and if you don't know it, learn it. And when you've learned it, pass it on to your children and your grandchildren. We believe, yes, and we are not ashamed of our beliefs.